Well, hello everybody, I'm L.A. Little, and this is your daily Neo TA Wrap. Where we take a look at these markets, we do it from a neoclassical perspective each time, asking ourselves what happened today, what does it tell us about the coming ones. Do the show four times a week, Monday through Thursday, broadcast at or before 10 o'clock Eastern Time, archived on YouTube under the channel L.A. Little. As far as what did happen today, if we move over, take a look at it, uh, we did get a down day, we got some follow-through selling, but... All in all, when you consider what took place over the weekend with the no vote out of Greece and the inability of Shanghai to hold a big bounce off of more intervention type activity to see us down, you know, a quarter of a percent is nothing. We look elsewhere, gold up, uh, but off the highs. Bonds were the big winner today, all the big loser. Dollar was pretty flat. So, Equities down, but not that much. No real follow through on the Greek situation. And that really should be what we focus on to start here. If we look at the S&P 500, we see it come down. Look at the volume on it, you know, doing 34.8. The bar is down 36, 37. You do 34, you don't get the belows. You do kind of a hammer reversal again. Folks, this just does not want to trade lower. On a day like today, with Europe down 2% or so, you know, a good good percentage, this market should have stayed down, should have tried to test the bottom, should have tried to break. Did not. If you look at it on the weekly, you're still holding this swing point low, 2067.93. Today closed 26, uh, 2068. So you're just above it, uh, but holding it so far. In other words, you're holding the range at this higher level. And that range, uh, really, if, if you take the smallest range, right, it's up here. If you take a, a range below it, it's about there. You're in the middle of that lower range, but you're holding the swing point low. You've got this swing point low here defining the bottom. When you look at this, the likely scenario after what we saw today is for a bounce back up, right, that comes back up farther. In other words, you get some sort of an ABCD structure that's going to be small back up the other way, right, because this came all the way down to here. Now, if you take your ABCD structure, it just gets you up a little bit farther. That would get you over this swing point low, right, which would give the bulls some hope. Trade it up to that 2061 level or whatever that number is. Uh, what is it? 20, 2091 level. And then if you go back over here, what does that do? That brings you right back to the lower end of that higher range. In other words, it brings you right back up into this guy. And that's where you could expect the sellers once more to step back in and try to sell it. But tomorrow looks like a bounce from the indexes. And the fact that you couldn't sell it down today when you should have. IXIC, the NASDAQ composite, same thing. Goes down, turns around, closes up. Well, closes down, but closes well off the bottoms. NDX, same thing. The only one that really struggled today in a larger way uh, was the Russell. Let's pull the Russell up and look at it. And here's the Russell. So you go down, you get up underneath here. You've closed just over these breakdown bars, lows, less volume. That's a reversal. That's the one given the best signal so far. When I come back, we'll take a look at a few more of these equity markets around the world and a couple of interesting things inside the domestic markets that give us a clue as to what's going to happen not just tomorrow but probably the remainder of the week. I'll be right back. Do you have retirement funds you want to keep invested yet you constantly worry about a potential market crash? As LA says, you shouldn't worry about a crash until it's time. Through LA's extensive research, he has identified the key characteristics that are necessary for a market crash. In the 2008 crash, for example, our investors actually made money and avoided huge losses through LA's investment advice. Because the markets usually go up, our retirement service keeps you invested when risk is low and reduces your exposure when risks become elevated. There are three portfolios you can follow, aggressive, balanced, and conservative. 
It's a simple process at a reasonable cost that requires very little of your time. To learn more, go to our homepage, hover over Retirement Service, and click Get Started. All right, as we come back here, you know, one of the biggest tells today was in the DAX. And again, you have the Greek situation, you got the Germans on the hook for all the money, or a lot of the money, right, in terms of who has the debt inside uh, Europe. DAX can't even make a new low. You get Greece basically defaulting and the DAX can't make a new low. Now, it did not test those lows. There's no volume on those lows. And you were pushing as much volume here today as you had previously. But you still, you know, you would think that today you'd break it. You didn't break it. You actually came down, you tested, you flipped back up. Is this going to be an ABCD structure to the downside? I mean, that's the real question, right? Is will something happen? Will a news flow turn, whatever, push this down, break, make new lows? It certainly isn't, you know, a, a cakewalk back up at this point. But if this does turn and start to work its way higher one more time, it's definitely going to, you know, shall we say, raise a few eyeballs, you know, or eyebrows because. You've got this low, you're going to have a slightly higher low if you don't make new lows. Come back up and try to test in these areas up here again, and uh, that would be a big turn if it happened out that way. Let's look over at uh, the CACs. Uh, the CACs actually did make a new low, but made it on slightly uh, higher volume, I believe, 1.3. Just barely, 1.36, yeah, just, I mean, almost the same amount of volume. So, French market trades down, closes slightly lower, but it does look like the German market is going to try to lead this back up tomorrow. We do have meetings in Europe tomorrow that are going to be important. We had the ECB today not only confirm that they were not going to give more money to the Greeks, but also marking down some of that uh, debt that they actually have already and saying it's not worth as much as we have it on the books. Uh, therefore, any new collateral you're going to have to raise, you know, any new money you have to raise even more collateral to get it. So at this particular point, you know, even though Greek requested money, at this point they haven't gotten it. And that's really going to be the big play tomorrow is how does that news flow work? And do we see this market reverse? Does the CACs come right back up and recapture that low? And if it does, it's going to be a big tell. So that's going to be the situation in Europe. If we move over to Asia where they're having their, uh, their issues, uh, the Shanghai, actually the, the uh, Shanghai traded uh, with a lot more volume tonight. Uh, that volume was back up in this area up here, about 8.5 billion shares. So, uh, you know, I don't have it in yet. It hasn't, you know, for whatever reason, they don't print it uh, as early as they used to. Anyway, that uh, did not make a new low, so you get high volume, bounce, no new low. This thing, again, is going to try to bounce. Now, the bounce here, they're going to be key test all the way up. You've got swing point lows here will be the first test, and it's an overlap of this one. And so this little area right here is going to be a hard spot to get back over. And so I, let me draw it in more clearly. It's right in that area there. That's where you want to be watching. At price point about 42, uh, about 42.30 or so, and so as it comes back up, assuming it does, that's going to be the spot. 42 from the today's close is still 400 and something points higher. So we're talking about a 10% bounce just to get there. That would be kind of the place where you would expect the sellers to come back in. So if you're playing this market, that's where you want to be looking. If you look elsewhere, the damage in Shanghai is affecting other markets. For example, Hang Seng gets hit. What does it do? It comes back into the retest regen. Now, this is on a weekly, so we've only got one day trading so far. But typically, on the first test back, after more than six bars up here, that's a high probability buy. We'll see if it works out that way. Should work out that way. Uh, that's the setup there. Uh, so that's the European markets, that's the Asian markets. Those markets look like they're ready, primed to try and bounce. If we go back to our markets, it was the same story. 
So if we move over and take a look at the auxiliary markets in particular, if we look at bonds and the dollar, the dollar tried to push higher and could not do so. Dollar looks like it's going to fade back in, which is, which is interesting at this particular point in time. But it's just range trading, so I, you know, I don't see big moves here, and I don't see them affecting the markets as much as a result. Oil. Oil sells off, sells off hard. Story was, uh, you know, Iran uh, and, and, of course, the dollar strength, but the dollar strength didn't play out. Folks, this is just a, a bunch of stops being blown away. You know, that doesn't mean that it's going to continue to the downside. It also doesn't mean it's, a, you know, a buy here. But we had these swing point lows break on Friday. Today, they blow them all away. They take out all the stops on the way down. And now they're coming back into this low, gets underneath it. If it stays underneath it this week, it will try to come back down and test into the next set of lows. So the low on this high volume, high, 1793. Today you close at 1773. That's the number this week. That's where you should be looking uh, this week. Bonds. Bonds got a nice big bounce again. Bonds themselves are finally getting some sort of a consolidation at the bottom end of this range. And so if you break out of this range and project it forward, it takes you back to the next set of highs. So that high becomes the key bar on the way up. It actually coincides with this high volume spike. Today, you didn't quite get into it, but that's going to be the test. Number there is 118.67. Uh, got as high as 118.65, so misses it by two pennies. It's going to test it. It's going to test that high volume, which is a test end of this high. That's going to be the key test. My suspicion is it's going to hang in this area and wait on something else to push it higher. Gold and silver. If we look at silver, you know, silver couldn't get anything going. Tried to push up just inside day still. Nothing there. If we look at, and we're talking about off of this larger high volume bar, a wide price spread high volume bar inside bar inside that still gold gold actually that same bar had traded under it now it gets back into it so under back in a little bit less volume gold's going to try to bounce a little bit more if we go to the euro the euro tries to trade lower can't it looks like it's going to hold and if we look at the uh, japanese currency it's been getting a big bounce but it's back to the top of the range it's going to be a tough tough uh, it's going to be hard let's shall we say to get over these highs right now this little congestion area so looks to me like the yen's going to pull back euro is going to kind of fade a little bit higher dollar doesn't want to you know go up anymore probably fade back in all that says for some reason things are going to get, get quiet again in the currency markets bonds also quiet what does that tell me? It tells me you don't chart a dull market because this market looks like, for all of what is happening, it looks kind of dull from the way these charts are setting up. If that's true, then this market's going to find a way, probably, to spike a little bit higher and frustrate a few more people. Let's look at the major sectors right quick uh, before we call it a night. You know, the bad news is on the SOX. SOX breaks down, gets underneath this low, has less volume, but stays under it. Has to recapture tomorrow. If we look elsewhere, biotechs continue to be the strongest of the group. They continue to press and press and press. Don't want to give it up. This morning, I did a, uh, a piece. If you haven't seen it, you might want to come check it out. I did a piece talking about the energy stocks. If we look at those energy stocks here tonight, and uh, we'll just take the XLE since we have it up. Trades lower, volume pretty heavy. This is coming back. Let's put it on the weekly. This is coming back to test this low. That's what it's doing now. If it gets under it, it's going to go for the lows. Divergence is what you're looking for. That's what this show was about this morning. You might want to check it out. It's just, you know, it's a two, three minute play, and see what you think. But I think energy is one of those areas that could keep the S&P uh, struggling. XLF, although energy is due for a bounce, I wouldn't jump on the first bounce. You want to see divergence really develop, and that is oil trades lower and energy doesn't want to go with it. XLF comes down, trades back up, doesn't have as much volume. Uh, XLI 
trades down, comes back up, closes just above the lows, no, not as much volume. What are you seeing here in these? You're seeing uh, an attempt to turn and get bounces tomorrow. XLV test lows can't stay down. XLY doesn't even get to the lows, doesn't stay down. The utilities have been bouncing, still bouncing. Uh, they're coming back in to do a test. Uh, actually didn't get a low here, so they're going to come back up. Looks like it, they can get up even higher. And the big bar here, the low is uh, 4256. If the utilities start to roll over, right, that says some of the fear is leaving, and then the equities can do even better. So I'd kind of watch it from that perspective. Technology struggling still, but again, tries to test the lows, doesn't have as much volume. Looks like it's primed for a bounce. And finally, if we look at the transports, Transports get under the lows from last week, less volume, closes over them again. Even the weakest want to bounce. Folks, this market's set up to bounce. Looks like it's set up to try and bounce um, even more so as the week unfolds. That's my take. That's what it looks like tonight. And uh, I would be careful to short a dull market if it ends up that way. Thanks for joining me. Tell a friend, tell two. I'm L.A. This is and was your daily Neo TA wrap. Have a great night, and I'll see you next time. Good night.